Hey guys, in this quick um, Redshift tutorial, I'm going to be covering a new feature that's arrived for Maya, Cinema 4D, Houdini. I believe 3ds Max also has it, but I'm not 100% sure. And um, <clears throat> it came out a couple weeks ago, and so I've, uh, now that mo more of the apps have it, I think I'll cover it. And so basically what it allows you to do is to add 3D noises and to your global volume fog so <clears throat> if we uh i've got just this basic scene set up here of some um just spheres spread around and so if we do a quick little ipr all we've got is our light and a global volume fog and so if we open up the render options and we could just delete the the volume fog I have it's just the defaults so if I get rid of it right now we don't have any any volume fog and so if I create one brand new just on the default settings it's already working we have a fog and um, if we select the uh, light that we have in the middle to make sure that the fogs working you just have to um, turn on volume contribution at the bottom of your light settings so right now I've got it set to 0 0.61 and if I go to 0 it turns it off the higher it goes you know the more more intense the fog is and so we'll just keep it at these settings for now and so in the past we weren't able to add any detail into this fog that we've got going here it was just solid this is how the fog would look and so this recent feature lets you actually plug in and control the uh, fog texture and so if you click on your volume settings either the node or if you come up here and you right click and click into this you'll select it and so now we've got this new option to actually connect a texture into the tint tab that we've got here and so the tint basically controls the color if we uh as you can see and so what's cool is now if we click this and we make a <clears throat> let's just do a a noise actually let's do a a red shift noise which is better since we we can control it more um red shift noise so now we've got a redshift noise connected into our volume scattering tint. And so what's cool is this actually lets us control several things. And let's actually make a ramp so that, let's delete that, so we can actually control the, uh, the, the, the gradient of our noise once we, we start tweaking it. So let's actually um, plug this in here. And let's plug that in. And actually, let's do it for the V instead of U. And so we'll switch up here to the type to V ramp. And so right now, if we crush this, it, it gives us a little more control for the gradient of the noise and so right now you can't really see the noise and that's just probably because of the noise values are too small and so if we go into our noise node and under the the coordinates and noise we have actually several options in here and so we have complexity, the type of noise, we can change from fractal to cell, the turbulence, the amplitude, distortion, and at uh, underneath the coordinate section we actually have overall scale. And you could actually use different noises, so you could use the Brownian noise, the other Maya noises, I'm just using the redshift noise for our example. And um, so let's change the scale. And so now that we've made the uh, scale smaller, you're starting to see some variation going on back here. And 
And so let's try point 0.1. That might be a little too small, so let's try point 0.5. And so now we've got our ramp. And so with our ramp, we could actually control how fast the uh, fall off is occurring, as you can see. We pinch it in. Now we've got sharper fall off going on. Let's pinch it a little more right there. Maybe pull back the white a little. Cool. And so that's giving us um, some variation in there. And so now we can, now that we can see things a little better, we could add distortion to our noise. We can maybe decrease the scale or increase the scale of the frequency. We can maybe increase the complexity or decrease it so it's softer or higher. We'll make smaller little uh, variations in there. We can adjust the amplitude. Let's stick to two. Oops. You can adjust the min and max or the bias. So if you want to push it in one direction more, so it's biased to mostly black rather than, than white, zero is the dead center, or we could bias it in the opposite direction like this, where there's more white than black. But we'll just keep it at zero. Oops, I mean 0. 0.5. That's what I meant. <laughs> and um, yeah, so let's actually now adjust our light intensity. Contribution. And so let's uh, increase that a bit. Yeah, cool. So now we've broken up the fog and so you can animate the fog by just um, moving the, the the time so you can make it constant or user so if we make time constant and we just slide the slider the noise pattern will move around so this is great for animating your fog and your scene and also breaking up just a plain regular fog. It gives you a little more variation. So this is a really useful new feature, especially for people building environments and stuff that want that little extra color and, and, and breakup of the fog. And so what's cool is since this is the, the ramp is here, we can actually change the color for this. This is all just like any other ramp. You could just adjust this. So maybe we want to do something like this. And maybe we'll have a little more saturated blues in the darker regions. Maybe we'll push the black back a little bit. Put a purple in here. We'll maybe put a teal in this area. Or maybe let's go yellow. Why not? And as you can see, building up our, our ramp, we're starting to get these colors in here introduced. So yeah, that's, that pretty much sums it up. You could um, do lots of cool stuff with this. So even, even this ramp, we could add extra noise. So if we add more noise in here. You know, as you can see, it's, it's adjusting the way that the color and stuff is falling off.
maybe will bias this back a little bit into the darks again like that. Yeah, and so as you can see, doing this, you get a lot more variation inside of your your fog for your whole scene. And so if you do this in combination with maybe some VDBs and stuff, you can get some really cool atmospheric effects. And so this was, again, recently added, I'd say in the last month or so. And so if you haven't updated, update, and you'll find this setting. And... Again, it's in Maya, it's in Cinema 4D, it's in Houdini, and I believe 3ds Max also has it. So, uh, yeah, I hope you guys learned something new and, and you have fun making some cool new fog effects. Um, and, yeah, thanks again, everybody that's supporting my Patreon also. Um, I really appreciate that, and I enjoy making new tutorials for you guys. Have a good one. Bye.